happy to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This says, I want to take you to this verse. And from there, I, will, I was wanting to talk on that, but that God began to give me a totally a different message. It's not a new message for you. Things that normally I speak many times, the same thing, I'm going to bring it back to you. But get something this evening so that anything that comes from the Lord is a blessing. We get transformed, we get changed, we get next level in our spiritual life. Uh, spiritually, we must grow. I've been talking about this subject, spiritual growth into, in our Telugu, Telugu church in Shaja. And, uh, but we need to grow. And the word is our food. And it makes us to grow. Amen? So that's where we'll go. And I'll read this Psalm 128. Verse 1 to 4. Then I will pray and then we'll talk about it. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Let's pray. Father, you are always Master God, there to be with us, to speak to us, to strengthen us and guide us. This evening, Father God, we look to you. Master God, we stretch forth our hands asking to fill us, O oh Father God. Fill us with your presence, with your word that transforms our lives, O oh Father God. We want to be renewed in your presence. Yes, Father, in your presence there's fullness of joy and we get renewed in your presence, Father God, to get to a new level spiritually. Father, bless this word and let this come into our hearts and Lord, grow as your word says, O oh Father God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in Jesus' most precious name. Pray, Lord. Amen. I love this psalm. I use this psalm in dedications for birthdays. Not only this, I also use the psalm before, Psalm 127. And then I also read this. I always use, read this both. But when I come to this psalm, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. There's a message by itself. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. There's a message there. And then, who walks in his ways. And when you, when you eat the labor of your hands, you know, you can earn a lot of money. There's a possibility that you don't eat it. You don't enjoy it. There are people like that in this world. But if you eat the labor uh, of your hands, and you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. The qualification again goes to verse 1. To be well with you, what is that qualification? Blessed is he who fears the Lord. That's the qualification. I'm going to talk about the fear of the Lord. And let's go further. Verse 3, it says, Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in, a, in the very heart of your house. It looks like he's only talking to men and not to women. It doesn't matter. It is not that way. I always say there's no difference between men and women in the, when it comes spiritually. So basically, your house will be a fruitful house when you fear the Lord. The house will be fruitful. Your house will be filled with joy. And then his father says, your children will be like all your plants all around your table. Uh, nowadays, we have table. We have a six-seat table, but still uh, <laughs> two more seats empty. <laughs> if all four of us sit. Now, Joji and uh, Sushmita is better. So, and all around your table, praise God, this, the beautiful children that they have, and may God bless them. Because I was inspired to bring this word based on what we are going to do today. But God is going to give us even further. And it says, your children will like all your plants all around your table. All your plants are beautiful. They look beautiful. And they are actually used as symbol of peace. All your branches. And verse 4, behold, thus shall the man be blessed. Who fears the Lord. That's the message. Now, fear of the Lord, when we talk, I have been coming across messages. People talk about the fear of the Lord in a uh, way. <clears throat> they say, should we fear the Lord? They don't want to talk, fear the Lord. God is not fearsome. Uh, you know, those kind of terminology is used in the world. They don't want to say, no, no, you should not fear God. You must revere him, give reverence to him, in other words. Uh, I don't know why they're afraid to say that word, fear the Lord. 
And the whole Bible talks about the fear of the Lord. How men of God, great people, prophets, everyone feared God. And when you want to learn more about fear of God, there are verses that speak about it. The one verse I like is from the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 28. And to man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Hold on to that word. Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And then, to depart from evil is understanding. I'm not talking about that now. Then, another verse talks differently. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Also, there is another verse in, 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 in uh, Psalms. I'm not going to go there. Proverbs uh, 9, 10. It says like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now look at the contrast. There is some difference between these two verses. In Job 28, 28 says, Fear of the Lord is wisdom. If I was a teacher, if I had a blackboard, I would have written, Fear of the Lord is equal to wisdom. You get something? Fear of the Lord is equal to wisdom. Whereas in Proverbs it said, Fear of the Lord is beginning of the wisdom. I always remember this. What fear of God did to me. I'll tell you. Like everybody. I'm a Bombay like they are. We, we sometimes used to boast and still boast. Some of us. We think we are smart. We think. Others may not accept it. Bombay's think like that. They are smart better than the other Indians. And we are on all those things. And we do all kind of things. We'll do some extra things that we are not supposed to do, which God don't like. So like every, anybody, I was also. I came to uh, Dubai when I was 22 and a half, very young. And I had a good job. Means I had good, enough money to spend, to lavish on. On top of that, I have no parents to monitor me. Nobody looks at me. No relatives. Nobody knows me at that time. So I can live whatever kind of life I want to. Means I can do anything. I can, I can drink, smoke, or go to bars, or go after women. All these things is possible where young people do. Okay. I did none of these things. Not because I was a nice guy. I want to tell you this. My mother taught me one word. Remember, son, you can do anything that you want, anywhere you go, from young time. But remember, God's eyes always watches over you. So this was the fear I had at all times, that God watches over me. If I do things that He does not like, I cannot have eternal life. And that was the fear. And that was the fear of the Lord. And that fear of the Lord gave me wisdom to not to fall into sinful life. Not because I didn't like to sin. Not because I did not enjoy. I was a very pious guy as I said already to you. But the fear of the Lord, whenever those attractions come, on the other side comes the fear. No, no, I can't do this. You understand? If you want to remain far from sin, fear of the Lord is the key. Amen? If you understand it, that's why it's called wisdom. Now what does a wise person do? Wise person does not fall into all kinds of problems and troubles in his life. Is that right? A wise person spends carefully. A wise person do, does his job carefully. He will not do things that will put him into trouble. Some foolish people who are not careful, they make do things, do mistakes and fall into troubles in their jobs. A wise person will be extremely careful when it comes to spending his money, saving money, about his life, not falling into all kind of this, uh, the things that are happening in the world and he save himself from troubles. A wise person, but a foolish person can fall into all kinds of troubles. And Jesus talked about wise and foolish man in a different way. He said, a wise man builds his house on the rock. At the same time, a foolish man will build in the sand. 
it is easy to dig a little bit and put a house on the sand, on the rock to make a foundation, to cut a, a, a foundation. It's difficult, but then he knows it's long, it stands long forever. Even it can face the storm. So the, there's a difference between a, a wise person and a foolish person. But if you want to be wise, you need to have the fear of the Lord. That's why it's called beginning of wisdom. But when you come to that, the second part, fear of the Lord is wisdom. In other words, it says, uh, I mean, 11, uh, Proverbs 9, 11 says, For by me your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. If you have fear of life, Fear of God, you have long life. You'll have good health. Everything will be good with you. And it says in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 33, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Now you find three kind of explanation about fear of the Lord. Instruction of wisdom means Fear of the Lord will instruct you how to be wise. And fear of the Lord comes by knowing who your God is, how great your God is. Now we learned fear of God is wisdom. And then furthermore, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Now when, uh, you know, I don't know how many of you read Ecclesiastes, preacher, the book of preacher. It looks like Solomon suddenly became an atheist. Did you ever feel that? In the middle, in the beginning? He says everything is waste. Doesn't he say that? All is vanity. Means wasteful. Talks and he says, all things is you have to eat, drink and may, do, may, have merry. That's your life. That's also he puts in between. But when he comes to the last chapter, chapter 12, then he says conclusion. And the conclusion it says, fear God and his, keep his commandments for this is man's all. He got his wisdom. He was a man full of wisdom because he did so many foolish things after having wisdom because he went, he did not live in the fear of God. He got wisdom when he feared God and honored him. But he did not live in that wisdom but did not fear God. I don't know what happened towards the end. He writes this and he says, at the end, fear God and keep his commandments for all is all this is man's all. Now, I want to take you to some different thing. So, fear of God is connected with obeying God. Is that right? Fear of God means, how will you demonstrate fear of God? Through obedience. It says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. Did you get something there? There's a meaning. What it says, now this is the day when God came on Mount Horeb and people were afraid. They didn't want to hear his voice. They're very afraid. Very afraid. Then Moses began to tell them, don't be afraid. When don't be afraid of his, what happened, what's the sight that you see. But remember this, do not fear, for God has come to test you by showing His presence. And that His fear may be before you so that you may not sin. If you see the glory of God, I want to tell you, the test testament of Sister Rani, to, let's take that today, hold on to that. For me, is the glory of God one more time appearing to me. That's what I was stirred. Many people, you know, they say they have cancer, the diet and gone. Or some people survive cancer for, for a few years. You know, right before your eyes, you see a person for 28 years. And I am a testimony the day she testified in St. Andrew's Church, in the main hall. 
I was there. How the Lord touched her. What happened to her? I was there in that place. This was in a healing service, and that that's I mean she testified the second day or something like that. The first day it was happened, second day she testified. I was there. What it reminded me was this God whom we serve is God indeed, who, who did not do great things in the past, but is doing now. And today, this testimony, I am testifying on our behalf to you so you can understand how great our God is. When you know the greatness of your God, then you can fear Him. This fear is knowing how great your God is and how to honor Him. Are you giving Him the rightful honor in your praise, in your worship? That's very important for us to know in our hearts. If you truly fear Him, the way you behave before His presence and always will be totally different. You don't need someone to hold a stick and tell you, do this, do this, do this. I always tell, let us come into the presence of the Lord on time. We say it, you hear it. I still don't understand. We take it so lightly. It's okay. We can go a little bit late after the songs, after a few songs. But songs is what you can give to God on a worship service. Praise is what you can give to God when you come here early. And as Pastor Samson said, if you come a little bit early, you can sing a little bit more songs. In other words, not about the songs. He's talking about praising God more. And that's why we come here. We need to praise Him more. We must take every opportunity to give Him praises. Word of God says, Psalmist King David praises God seven times a day. You'll find it in Psalm 119. Towards the last uh, eight verses, you'll, you'll see there. He used to praise God for seven times a day. Means when David praised God, he did not just go say, Lord, I praise you and thank you. Every time David praised God, he took his heart he sang songs to him. And he was a king. He was not an ordinary king. He was an emperor. Many kings were under him. He was one of the, I mean, he was the top king in those days. Probably the top. With all that, he praised God. Amen? Okay, let me take you further. And it says, because God has shown his glory to you, that you will have the fear of God. And the fear of God will keep you from sin. What will keep you from sin? Fear of God. Okay, let's go further. So, fear of God is opposite of sin. Before we said fear of God is wisdom. Now, fear of God is opposite of sin. And just we read this scripture a few minutes ago, but I'll read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse uh, 1 and 2. Now, this is the commandments and, I, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Verse 2, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all His statutes and His commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life that you that your days may be prolonged. That your days may be prolonged. Means that you'll be in good health and strength. Means what is it? That you may fear the Lord your God and keep to keep, to keep all His statutes. If you fear God, you'll keep all His commandments or test statutes. Without fear, you'll not. So need to instill that fear in yourself. And Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2, he says, for those things, all the earth and heaven and sun, moon and stars, my hands has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. But this one will I look on him who is poor and of contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. Fear of God means to tremble at his command. Doing the work with trembling, with submission. With a broken spirit, with a contrite spirit, you should be able to do whatever God has commanded you. Many people, many churches in the world, they are not doing that today. They talk about liberty. They talk about rejoicing. 
They talk about all those things. All, the, the church has become a fashionable place. It's a place of entertainment. I love to praise God, dance. I'm not against it. This should, have, this should be a spiritual thing happening within yourself. You dance because you're happy, because you know that who your God is. Not because you have to dance because there is music. No. The world is going that direction. If they have a good music, the church is full. Not necessarily all the people who are there are going to heaven. Churches are not actually fearing God, not showing the presence of God so that people will tremble at the presence of God. We cannot do those things. We need to obey God, tremble before Him. That's what He says. He says, on Him, He says, but this one will I look. But this one will I look on Him who is poor and contrite spirit, who trembles at my word. Again in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, it says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God. To walk all in his ways and love him. Now, I'm taking you to the next level of obedience. First, fear the Lord and obey him. But it also says to love him. Right? So, there is the fear of God is equal to love God. Fear of God is equal to love God. Okay. What, I'll take this scripture and make it everything clear to you. John chapter 15 verse 9. And the Father loved me. I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Now we are just going to a contrasting understanding of fear of the Lord. Now, before I said, because of fear, we have to keep the commandments. Now, Jesus is telling, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Okay, only by the end of this message, you get something more deeper, more uh, touching message that will make you to make some decisions in your heart. We need to fear God. But that fear comes because you love him. You honor Him. And because you love Him, what you do is, the result is, you obey His commands. It says, verse 10 again, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. You know, there is one verse, very interesting verse, very strong verse and powerful verse. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, talking about Jesus Christ, and who offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death <clears throat> and was heard because of godly fear. Verse 8. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He's talking about Jesus Christ. If you see the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, talks there about sevenfold spirit of God. Sevenfold. And out of the sevenfold, the, the last one is the spirit of wisdom, uh, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of of God. So, fear of God is an inclusive part of Holy Spirit. So, when you receive Holy Spirit upon you, you will also receive the spirit of fear, the fear of God. It is a very essential thing. Without the true fear of God, you will not be, worship, will not be able to worship God the way you should worship. You can sing songs. You can say some words, but when you fear God and worship Him, you will literally tremble before Him. This experience, if you have often, if not in the church, in your personal closet, 
it will give you such kind of an experience you begin to know the god whom you serve is real and is by your side he's by your side that's the reason you begin you do not feel like sitting anymore you feel like kneeling before him you feel like falling flat on on your face these are the experiences you should look for and if you do not look for you will never have them that is the reason jesus said when you pray go to your room close the door behind you because only in your personal connection with god that's the time you will experience god and you'll begin to know his greatness and every time you know his greatness your faith is boosted up like anything you will be able to do great things because you know that god is with you is near you and he is real for you the testimony like what we heard today tells you how real is your god but when you have a personal experience of presence of god you will begin to know this god whom you worship because the world is trying to tell you always are you really worshiping the true god are you do you know really actually this god or how how can you say god has to be worshiped only this way um, um, but how can you be sure the bible that you have is it some real book all these questions are shot into the lives of the people especially young people and children if you take your children through the presence of god the experience of god they will not depart from god that's very important that's why our prayer should not be just a prayer like a dry prayer a few songs and then no. let your children and your family have the experience of presence of god very often if you are not doing it every day but do it often amen we uh, when me and viju with chrissy and jasper sometimes we used to do fasting prayers with the children when they were very young we wanted them to have experience we used to teach them how to worship god and they used to experience then you know jasper is a, a kind of a is to be kind of whether we should call him emotional but he used to he used to have some spiritual touches the moment he does this kind of prayers that day he'll be the, the way he behaves will be totally different even as a kid he will not be naughty or he will be very he will be talking about god uh, jasper had some extraordinary ex- extraordinary experiences in very young he used to he saw once he said he saw jesus he spoke to him and he came and testified among some people he was very small five or i don't know what age he was at something like that five or six so those experiences he had but then it was our practice to give them the experience of presence of god and that keeps them well with to walk with god right okay let me take you to the scripture again now jesus when it came to jesus he himself learned to fear god that's what we read just now in book of uh, hebrews chapter 5 he learned what he says because of the sufferings that he had he learned to fear god and he prayed to god to help even though he was a son of god he still had to fear god and ask him and in in, 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 in vehement cries and tears to him was able to save him and though he was son he learned obedience he had to be obedient we learn it also we talk in book of philippians chapter 2 verse 8 says and being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of cross that's how jesus showed his obedience but he did not show this obedience not only of fear but also because of the love that's what we learn in john chapter 15 verse 7 and 8 right and then so that's why in the same uh, philippians it talks about chapter 2 verse 12 it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling i was talking uh, this morning you have to keep yourself in the good ways of god until the day of redemption it's in book of ephesians until the day of redemption now this gives a question so i'm not saved the day you receive jesus christ 
as your personal savior, you are saved. But your redemption is not complete until the day you leave this body. It could be our death or it could be coming of Lord Jesus Christ and taking us alive. So we need to safeguard the salvation that we got by fear and trembling. And that is the reason we come to church to learn the word, to walk in the ways of God. We have to learn every day what is that pleasing God, pleasing thing that I should do to please God. Is there anything in me that I am not pleasing God? Or I am missing my way or falling in sin. If you fall in sin, you lose your salvation. That's right. But I want to tell you, don't be afraid like that way. The grace of God is always available. So what happens is, when you fall into sin, His grace is so much, He gave us a comforter, teacher, and who will, you know, uh, who, who, who will uh, make, uh, what's that word, uh, convict us of our sin, so that we can go back to the Father and ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And we are forgiven. And that's what is, Keep your salvation in fear and trembling. Every time we have to examine. We have been given the ordinance of communion so that we will examine ourselves constantly. Amen? So, that's the way you will show or exercise your fear. That's the reason it said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But then, John 14, 15 says this. If you love me, keep my commands. And 1 John 4.18 says like this. It is the important verse. And there is no fear in love. Oh. Is it contrasting or contradicting with what we have been learning until now? It says there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Once you get perfected in love, your relationship with God becomes more love than fear. Get this word. That's what I want you to know to this evening. When your relationship is more love with God than fearing Him, you are loving Him so much. Anything that He tells you, you will do. Okay, let's talk it. Let's talk, talk like this as a father, as parents. Like, let's say, Pastor Samson, his daughter Tina is here, right here with us. He tells her to do something. He says, sir, calls her. Go, get, go to the car. I forgot my wallet there. Bring it. She has choice to hear him and go and get it. Or just, no, I, no, I can't go. So your car is far away. Even if it is far away, it's very hot out there because her father whom she loves. And whom? Her father who loves her. Okay, dad, I'll go and bring. Did you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not because, it's not because of fear. Because, yes, there are some fearful fathers who terrorize their children and make them do things under terrors. Our father is not doing like that. He loved us. Amen. He showed his love not by words, by sending his own son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross. And with that love, he showed his love to us. Now it is our turn to love him. So as we grow closer and closer to the Lord, our love will be perfected. And the perfect love will cast away fear. And henceforth, you do not obey God because of fear, but you obey him because of love for him. Anything that you find in His Word, you want to do it because you love God. And you, in your relationship with God, you must, re must reach to that level. But love of God will increase even your fear of God. Because fear of God is the Spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a component of Holy Spirit. So you will fear means because you love Him, when you come, you lift up your hands to worship Him. Not because the worship leader tells you, because you love him. You want to show the reverence 
because the moment you know when i when you say the heaven is my throne earth is my footstool what kind of temple you're going to build when you hear this word can you understand what kind of god you are serving the moment those words come into my if i hear from my ears and into my heart i'm telling you i actually fear you know what again further gives me fear when i begin to think the infinite existence of god i mean if god if heaven is his throne how big is heaven we have any measurement we have any limits so how big is your god sun uh, moon and earth which is not too far according to uh, today's science knowledge you think it's really near is we think it's next door we think like that because they're going in our own ability we cannot do but god says heaven is my throne earth is my footstool i mean footstool which means our both feet can fit on it i mean the whole earth which is beyond our imagination if it is his footstool how big is your god can you stand before him can you stand consciously before him without falling at his feet and that's the fear of god oh you you'll be filled with awe every time you think the greatness of god it's very important in your personal worship to remember the greatness of god so when you come here to worship him we can be i mean i i i get distracted with so many things but until i make up my mind i want to see god begin to close my eyes and begin to think of him i cannot see his greatness and when i see his greatness that's the time i begin to give him the true worship it could be the not first song not second song maybe third song the songs keep on going songs we keep on singing but the true worship does not emerge out of his until we begin to fear his greatness it is important for the worship leaders to bring incorporate such songs when they they show the greatness of god in your worship songs greatness of god then take them to express the love for god and that's the time we mellow down it's not a rule fast song and slow song because we cannot any more act before god we cannot dance before god we are trembling before god we mellow down fall on our knees lift up our hands and worship him in quietness be still and know that i am god that's the verse what it means is he is so great that if you have the right kind of fear in your heart you will not speak anymore you will begin to be look at his greatness with all struck words will not come out of your mouth you will sometimes make cry just tears flow from your eyes and you begin to experience it and sometimes joy gets filled into your heart you may be smiling words will not come out of your mouth that is a higher level of presence of god and higher level of worship we need to have those experiences in our worship services it's not about always very noisy it's not always speaking in tongues and worshiping the lord not always there should be time when your spirit should connect to the spirit of god and you should become one we need to have such solemn time it's not being solemn it's not that is you becoming solemn because you cannot do anything more than that because god is there so the fear of god gives you ability to obey god but the love of god makes you to obey him even more and that's called perfected love of god so you, if you have love for god you will also fear god amen both are interconnected both are complementing each other you need to have the fear of god at the same time you need to have love for god your love should grow your love should grow your fear should be there but your love should grow because you fear god every day it must increase and because of that you are able to worship him and love him amen and that is the relationship we should have with our father in heaven and that's what god want to speak then then what will happen it will be well with you 
it will be good things good things will begin to happen in your life because you're honoring God the way you should honor Him. That's the way you should live. And you, the, the, amount, the most you honor Him, He will honor you. It says, it's, the Word of God says, He honors those, those honor Him. It's straightforward. So that's what it says. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and it will be well with Him. My brothers and sisters, the message is very simple. I spoke a lot. We must learn to fear God. It says Jesus learned to fear God. He learned to fear God. Where? Through sufferings. Let me add this to this message. When sufferings comes in your life, do not be afraid. Learn to fear God. Do not be afraid, but learn to fear God even more. Begin to honor Him. In your sufferings, He will deliver you. He will Teach you fear of God. And once you learn the fear of God, when you submit to Him, He will deliver you from those things. You need to expect these things. Do not run away from sufferings. When they come, I'm not telling enjoy them. Take them in the right spirit. By the power that is in you, the power of the Holy Spirit is in you, who gives you power to endure suffering. Isn't it? The power of the Holy Spirit give you power to end your suffering. The sufferings will uh, uh, perfect you in love. Take you to more perfection. This evening, I just want to ask you, take few minutes. Take few minutes in your heart. Can I love God even more? Can I fear and give Him the right reverence this morning? I want to have that blessed life I want to have the life where all things will be well with me. Thank you, Jesus. Let's focus here. Amen. If you make this quality decision, I need to fear God because He's awesome. I need to love God because He loved me so much. And perfect love will cast away automatically. Your fear will go. You'll approach God with reverence and love for Him. Thank you, Jesus.
some of you, it's a time where you will tell God, God, do I really fear you enough? Lord, do I really love you enough? If you demand from me something that I love too much, will I give it to you? Abraham was asked to give away his son whom he loved so much. Because Abraham not feared at the time, but he loved God. He went and gave his son away. He sacrificed him actually. Even though he did not lay his knife on him, he actually sacrificed him. The moment he left his house, taking his son onto the Mount of Moriah. Can you do that? Is anything that you love more than that you love God? If God asks your time, God asks something else, a job, a thing, are you willing to give? That tells you how much you love Him and how much you fear Him. Think of some things. Then you can make a decision in your heart. No, I will give whatever God asks me. And that is how you can express your love for Him. Mahasakiri and the Kurabata Baba. It is between you and God. Father, we thank you for the privilege that you've given to us to come into your presence to praise you and worship you. Thank you for teaching us to fear you, Lord. I want to learn myself. I want Master God, not only for myself, but all the congregation here to learn the fear of God and to learn to love you, Father God. Thank you for your mercies. And as they go home, let them continue to do so, Father God. Let them demonstrate the fear and love in their actions, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We give all glory. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, Lord. Amen.